today we discuss volume. This is probably my favorite uh, or second favorite application of the integral. What we are working with is this is going to be P here. This is P, this solid. And it lies between x equals A and x equals B. And we are supposing the cross section of P perpendicular, this is an important word here, to the x-axis has some area function A of x. A of x needs to be continuous. Now let's look at the picture here. This red, okay, I have a little x here. My picture is drawn in two dimensions, but it's supposed to represent three. Um, I slice perpendicular to this axis, and this traces out um, something two-dimensional, the slice, on the solid, okay? And um, it has an area. I can do this for every x. We have an area function a of x. Now, we're going to use this to get the volume of the solid. So we can approximate the volume of P with a Riemann sum. And I mentioned this in class when we started this chapter on all the applications as they really all come from Riemann sums. And how are we going to do this? Well, how do Riemann sums always work? We subdivide the interval a to b into n subintervals. of length delta x, of equal length in fact, delta x, which is b minus a over m. Maybe I should make my Riemann sum partition x1 less than x2 less than xn, which is b, okay? And then the volume over this subinterval from xi minus 1 to xi is approximately is approximately well let's draw a picture this section really lends itself to drawing a picture every single time you work a problem so if you think about what's happening i have some subinterval Maybe this is one of the points in it. It's supposed to be equal length um, of length delta x, right? Delta x is this distance here. And then what I could do is I take this and I thicken it over this subinterval. Thicken it. And here is this. This has area function A of x here. Okay, so what is this? Well, this would be a xi. This here, this would be xi minus 1. So let's draw what I have done. This has area A of xi. And I have thickened it by delta x. So what's the volume of this? Well, you just have this area function, and then you have a, a width delta x. So you can think it kind of looks like a cylinder, right? So the volume over this subinterval, well, it's not exactly that, but it will be approximately the, the volume of this. Approximately a of xi times delta x. Now, technically here, the way I have set this up, you will notice I am doing a right Riemann sum, but this is perfectly fine. Okay, so then the total volume total volume is approximately, well, we add all of these up, A of xi delta x. Now, what happens when we take a limit. When we take a limit as n goes to infinity or a limit as delta x goes to zero, we get the actual volume 
of the solid. You can really think about this. This reminds some is, you know, you have like a loaf of bread that comes sliced. And that's kind of what you have here, okay? You have all of these slices that would sit over the partition. So what we see from this Riemann sum calculation is, um, maybe I will just write it down here, that the volume of P equals the integral from A to B of A of X dx. Okay, we see this from the Riemann sum. Now, you will see in the homework, the first couple of problems are ones exactly like this, where you just have to figure out the area function, you have a picture, um, and then you integrate. But what we're really interested in is, is a certain type of solid, which is called a solid of revolution. So let's get to an example of this type. Okay, well let's draw a picture and we will get started. I mentioned this is called a solid of revolution. Let me draw a picture and perhaps we will be able to see why. So first of all, I'm gonna draw my region. I'll do it over here. And I'm revolving about the x-axis. Okay, so my region is bound by y is 2x, x equals two, so I go out two. I'm gonna to need to go up one, two, three, four. Okay, I think I have space here. This would be two comma four. <laughs> kind of gets into the problem, but it's fine. And then we would have one comma two. I'll do this maybe in green. Here we go. Here we go. This is y equals two x. And here is the line x equals two. And then we also are, oh, no, no, no. This should say x equals zero is here. This should say y equals zero, which would be here. Okay, so this is my region. My region is a triangle. Now, this is not a solid, but we take, so here's my region S, we take and revolve it about the x-axis like this. So what happens here? Well, this green will come down here. Maybe I should put some tick marks down here. One, two, three, four, and we will be down here. The green, as we revolve around, maybe you can see what happens. The green is here. And what this point comes around like this, right? And here, this makes little, but it's filled in, okay? So this is making circles. When you take this line and you rotate it all the way around, okay? But it's filled in, so this is a cone. Do you see? Well, you notice this lies between x equals 0 and x equals 2 and x equals 2. This is a solid line between x, 2x values. And we can think about slicing it. So when we slice, a slice is like this, and this is what I was saying, it gives us circles. Then, just like we discussed, we would thicken this by delta x. And what do we see that we have? Um, this is what's called a disk. So we have some x i here, say, okay? And this is um, the picture of this slicing that we just discussed. So here we can think about the volume of just the slice, and I will redraw it. You take the circle and it's thickened, this is what is called a disk. Thickened by delta x is a disk. And this, there's sort of two or maybe three, depending on how you count it, 
techniques in this section, and one of them is using, using discs. We see here this cross section is a disc. Now, what's my radius? Because I need to figure out the volume of this disc. And once I have that, I know the volume of the whole solid would be approximated by a sum of these. Then I can set up my integral. The volume of this disc has some, is, well, this thing is pi r squared and then times the thickness. So this area, pi r squared, I have a little r. My radius, though, we must think about this right. It goes from here to here. So if we're thinking about the notation of the Riemann sum, the radius in this situation is um, 2xi. Okay, and so then the volume of my disk is pi 2xi quantity squared times the thickness delta x. Okay, which is pi times 4xi squared delta x. And so, maybe I'll write it this time, but I don't always, the total volume is approximately, we could subdivide, okay, I didn't write all that this time, but we could, and we would get a sum for pi xi squared delta x. If we had some partition uh, with delta x's, here it would be 2 minus 0 over n, right? But what I really want to do is integrate because it's much easier than a Riemann sum and it's exact. So I know the volume is an integral. And my x values range from 0 to 2. And then I can just write this, but, but what would the corresponding integral be? That would be 4 pi x squared dx. Okay? Now we have an integral, and it's not too hard of an integral to calculate. That calculates this volume. Okay, we have 4 pi over 3x cubed between 0 and 2, which would be 32 pi over 3. This is the volume of this solid. This solid is called a solid of revolution. And the way you get one, I would say almost all of the examples in this section are solids of revolution. The way you get one is you take a region and then you just revolve it or rotate it about a line. And it doesn't have to be an axis. You can revolve the same region about the line x equals 2 or x equals um, minus 1 or y equals 5 or all kinds of things. And we will practice them like that. But this is what a solid of revolution is. Okay, so now let's um, change the region slightly so that we see a different type of phenomena. Okay. So what am I going to change? This is going to change. And that's all. Okay, now, but I have to redraw the region. And it's going to have a new calculation because it's a different problem. This is y equals 2x. But now I am changing. Instead of going all the way down to 0, I'm going to stop here. This is the line y equals x. And finally, I still have x equals 2. This is now my region, and I would like to calculate the volume when I rotate. And I will typically draw this, showing which axis I'm rotating. And I don't always try to draw the full picture because it's difficult. But in my first few, I'm trying to so you get the idea. So what's going to happen when this rotates? Well, this is still going to come here. And now I have to draw here y equals x will go out to 2 minus 2, 1 minus 1. Oh. Then this will come, should be a straight line here. Go here, and then here, and then this comes around. 
Can you see? I hope so. This has almost a cone, except this, it's like this center is hollow. It's kind of like one of those, um, those cups. You have a little, those cups that you fill with water and then you drink. We're still gonna do the exact same strategy, slice perpendicular to the axis of revolution. But the object that we get for our cross section is different. It's not a circle because it has something removed. So let's do this. Let us slice, and maybe I will use this green I already drew. Here's our cross section here. And here is the inside one. Slice, okay, and thicken. Like this. This is slicing perpendicular to the axis of revolution, okay? Maybe I will mention that because this is a very important part of, it was also true in the last example, to axis of revolution. In both cases, it's the x-axis, and in both cases, um, it fits our very first setup, which is we have a solid line between x equals a and x equals b. But now, here, this thickness, again, would be a delta x, and let's draw what it is. Well, you see, if I look straight down, if you literally look at the cross section, which is not three-dimensional, it's two-dimensional, we have a circle with the circle on the inside removed. And in a situation like this, we will have what's called an outer radius, which is the radius of the big circle, is a capital R. And we will have an inner radius, which is the radius of the inner circle, little r. So what's the area here? We know we could take the area of the outside circle minus the area of the inside circle. So this would be pi capital R squared minus pi little r squared. This would be area. This would be area. Okay, but what we're interested in is the volume of this, this, this thickened slice, which we thicken this by delta x. This is no longer a disk. This is called a washer. And the volume of a washer, well, you would just take this area. Uh-oh, I'm stepping on my microphone. Okay, you take the area and you multiply by the thickness. So the volume of the washer would be pi, maybe I'll factor out the pi, delta x, okay? Now let's look at our specific example. Now we have to, this is why you probably want to look at a graph and sketch at least the region, you don't have to sketch the three-dimensional solid every time so that you get the right um, capital R and little r. And there will be some other pieces too. Capital R is is the distance from here to here. So let's say we had a little uh, xi here that appeared in some, remind some. Capital R would be 2xi and little r would be just xi because this is the line that you can't see it so much anymore because I added so much to the graph. But this is the line y equals x. So we have capital R, I'll write that here in our example capital R would be 2xi and little r is just xi. So the volume of a washer for my example would be pi capital R squared which would be 4xi squared minus xi squared and this simplifies to just pi times 3 xi squared, like this, okay? Oh, delta x, delta x, delta x, don't forget delta x. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I forgot it again. I just put the delta. 
now we're okay. I didn't, you know, I only had something two dimensional, which is not a volume. I had area. So make sure, of course, always that you have all of the terms. Now everything should be all right. This would be our volume of this washer that we see here. But we can't, we can't from here write down the integral. Maybe I will. See if I can do it but here. It is actually quite a short integral. And I think I have space. So the total volume would then be, it's an integral, zero to two, because that's where the x ranges. And then we have pi 3x squared dx, okay? Okay, now we integrate, which becomes pi x cubed evaluated between zero and two, we get eight pi. Okay, this is the volume of the solid. Okay, so let's first graph our region. This is important, right, so that we can set up everything correctly. Let's graph the two curves. Maybe I'll go over two here, and then we would go one, two, three, four, and we have a square. More or less, that's x squared. So y is x squared. Well, what would x is y squared be? It's basically the exact same graph. You just do this, all right? You get the same graph because you interchange x and y. Uh, okay, so this would be, oh, except I don't have four to go out four, but I certainly could do this then here be squared, something like this, okay? I will stop here because I see the region, right? This is gonna go out, so it increases forever. This positive part we know is the square root of x as a function of x, and the negative part is negative square root of x. Okay, well, this more or less we see our region. Great, okay, here's our region because this and this it cuts out exactly this little part right here, this is our region, and we, this region lies between x equals 1 and x equals 0, or between y is 1 and y is 0, like this. Okay, so what do we first want to revolve about? The x-axis, that's this way. If I do slice and thicken, this is what will intersect the region. So sometimes I won't draw the whole revolution, Although maybe I will here just to can, because it's only example three. But you, I will just draw the region, draw the representative rectangle that in the slicing situation corresponds to slicing and thickening by delta x. Slicing perpendicular, okay, to the axis of revolution, as I have said. But here, maybe I will, this will come down here. And then again, we have revolve, we have a solid, and then there's this hole here, and so this will not be disks, this will be washers, okay? So if we draw our washer, and I will reference my representative rectangle to make sure I find the right inner and outer radius. This is how this works. Okay, here is little r, here is capital R, and then I thicken, and it will be a washer with thickness, Delta x says we will be integrating with respect to x. Okay, so I go back and look at my picture. This inner radius here is the blue function, which is x squared. So little r would be a x i squared, like this. Or you could drop the x i part and just set it up, write the integral. But I'll do that in this example, maybe one more time just because it's really coming from a Riemann sum. And then, um, capital R, well, it's the red. We know the red curve is x is y squared, but we need this as a function of x. Because we're integrating with respect to x, we need both curves written as functions of x. 
And as I mentioned when I was graphing it, this, this positive part is the square root. So here, x is the, no, y is the square root of x. Or y equals square root of x. So capital R is the square root of x i, like this. Okay, so now let us get the volume of a washer. Again, like in the last example, it's pi. We take capital R squared, which is xi, minus little r squared, which is xi to the fourth, and then we multiply by thickness. This is the volume of my washer. Okay? We can immediately write down an integral. The total volume is the integral. X ranges between 0 and 1. And then we have pi. We have x minus x to the fourth dx. Okay? Again, this function is not hard to integrate. It's polynomial power rule on every term. And the limits of integration are also make the algebra, or arithmetic I should say, on the, on the easier side. It's just a half minus a fifth. And then you would subtract zero. This is 5 over 10 minus 2 over 10. We get pi, 3 pi over 10. This is our volume, okay? So what I have done here is part A. We have revolved about the x-axis, and in order to use either disks or washers, we would slice perpendicular to the axis of revolution. This is how I've done this. We have 3 pi over 10. <laughs> okay? Now let's try this other one. So I'm going to have to erase some. We will revolve about the line x equals 1. And I can keep a lot of my picture because you notice that the region does not change. I'm just revolving about a different line. I can redraw my axis here. And I can redraw, oh, this is blue. Y is x squared. Okay, that didn't take too long. This is the point 1, or the value, x value 1. This is the point 1, comma 1, which is the intersection of these two curves. But now you see what's different is, I need to erase this part without a doubt, is here I, is what I'm revolving about. It's a different line, like this. So let's kind of draw what's happening here. Let's make a x equals 2. The red, when you revolve about this line, the red comes here. Uh-oh. And the blue, like this. And then these are making coming around and through the back like this. So it's going this way, and again, we have a solid. Um, the solid, again, has this hole in the center here, and this is filled in, this is filled in, and goes around, okay? Now, remember what I said. If we want to use disks or washers, which is the only two I've talked about so far, we must slice perpendicular to the axis of revolution. And this is our first time where the axis of revolution is a vertical line. Perpendicular, well, let's draw a representative rectangle, which would happen with the slice. So we would slice perpendicular like this. Okay, then we thicken. There's our representative rectangle. We'll go all the way around, makes a washer. But you see here, this is thickness delta y. This tells us we are integrating with respect to y. Okay? This is exciting. And we have a lot more going on here um, than in the last example. But you notice I started with an easy example and warm ourselves up to more and more complicated as we practice and get used to what we're doing. Okay, here. 
um, we're integrating with respect to y. Let me draw the washer label, and then we will go back to our picture and try to figure out the inner and the outer radius, because this is definitely washers. Here is a washer, or here is at least this annulus. You thicken it to become a washer. The thickness is delta y. Everything must be in terms of y. Okay, but, well, first of all, maybe I need to, this is written x is a function of y. I need to write this one, and again, this is in this region, quadrant one, you could say, where x and y are both positive. So x is positive to the square root of y. But one thing that is different, if I label, you go from the center out to here, capital R. You go from the center to here, little r. The center is no longer um, zero. So far in our examples, the center has been zero, and so either the inner or the outer radius, or if it's disk, just the radius, was just a function value. But when the center is different, here the center is at um, x equals one. I'm going to draw the region a little bigger, um, maybe right here. so that we can see without all of this clouding the picture per se. Now, then I will draw the line x equals one. And I'm gonna write everything x as a function of y, and here, here, like this. Okay. This is x equals one. Now, this one is x is square root of y. x is square root y. And then the red one here is x is y squared. Okay, and then if we look at this, the inner radius um, goes here. It'll go from here to here. This is little r, and then if you go from, from here all the way out to here, this is capital R, right? Here to here, little r, all the way out to here, capital R. You see it here, and it's sort of translated if you revolve like this. Okay, but now, because I have drawn this, we can, we can write it correctly. Capital R equals, well, it's one, it's this length, which is one minus y squared. Okay, and little r is this length, which is one minus the square root of y. Be very careful when you figure out your two radii or adjust your radius, um, depending on if it's disks or washers. Okay, so here now, I was doing this in blue. The volume of the washer is no different than in the previous. Oh, maybe I'll just say V sub wash. V wash. Volume of the washer would be, it'd be pi. It would be capital R squared, which is one minus Y squared, square, and then minus little r squared, one minus square root of y squared times delta y, which is my thickness, okay? This would be my volume. Now, okay, um, maybe let's set this one up. I'll set it up now. So what would the actual total volume, I would say, be? I will set up the integral. Maybe I would show you how you would simplify this. Zero to one and even though it looks the same, it's important to understand we are taking the y ranges of the region, which is zero to one, and then we have pi, then we have one minus y squared squared minus, one minus the square root of y squared dy, okay? And this is just a setup.
set up. Set up. Okay, but maybe I will mention for a moment how you would simplify this. So how would you do this if you were going to fully integrate this function while well, I would multiply everything out? And then I have a one minus two square root y plus y. And then you can just simplify this sum with collecting terms. One minus one is zero. We have, there's a y to the fourth minus two y squared. Over here, we have a minus y plus two square root y. Okay, none of this is terribly hard to integrate. This would be the integrand here. You just have one, two, three, four terms. Integrate each with a power rule. Evaluate between zero and one. And what should you get here? Okay, so if you do integrate this, which why not if you want to do it, <laughs> you get 11 pi over 30 for the volume. Okay, but I was really interested in the setup with this problem. Let's end our volume day one video by going back to this region that we started with in today's lesson, which was the region bound by y equals 2x, y equals 0, and x equals 2. And I mentioned we could revolve this about a number of lines, and, and each one gives us a different solid of revolution. And so let's practice setting up an integral to calculate the volume, while well, part A will be revolving about the line y equals 5, and part B will be revolving about the line x equals 2, and I will use slicing. So we will, in day two, I will just say in the next volume video, we will learn another technique that is not slicing and has a, a different type of setup. But this video, we are slicing perpendicular to the axis of revolution. Okay. First of all, one, two, three, four, five, the line y equals five is here. We revolve, okay? If we slice perpendicular to the axis of revolution, my representative rectangle looks something like this, thickness delta x. So part A, you notice there's this gap here. So this region, I don't even have it on the board where it would go, it would go all the way around like this, okay? But part A here, this will be washers with respect to x, okay? And then, well, I can draw a washer thickness delta x, and we have this capital R and little r, okay? And we get them by looking at the picture. So let me look here, okay. From the axis of revolution, which let me label that before I go any further, this is the line y equals five, okay? This length here is my little r. This is sort of this, this hole in the middle. Well, it's this, right? This length, little r, it's this length. It's five minus two x. So we see little r is five minus two x, okay? It's this, this length here is little r, okay, five minus two x. And then capital R is this length. Well, I won't add any more to my picture, but we see it, it's five. So capital R is five. Capital R is five. From the axis of revolution down to this here, which is the line y equals zero. So now, well, we know the volume of a washer is pi capital R squared minus little r squared delta x. Immediately, I can write down the integral. We go from zero to two. These are the x 
limits of integration, and then pi, this will be 25 minus 5 minus 2x squared dx. This is the answer for part A. Okay? This is when we revolve about the line y equals 5, and we slice perpendicular to the axis of revolution. Very nice. Now, what about the line x equals 2? So maybe I will have space to do it here on the board. Well, I need to change some things in my picture. I am now revolving about a vertical line, and in fact, the line is already on my graph in blue. So let me erase this axis of revolution. I'm now on the next part, and I will erase this, and I need to erase my representative rectangle. Okay, perfect. Now I'm revolving here. And slice perpendicular to the axis of revolution. Now, my representative rectangle looks different. It goes like this. Thickness delta y. Okay, so I'm gonna be integrating in part b. I'm gonna be integrating with respect to y. And what's gonna happen is this here, it's gonna go all the way around. This will be disks. So this is disks with respect to y. Now what do I need here? I need an integral of y. Everything must be with respect to y. So first of all, I can look at my region and my limits of integration will be y limits of integration. y on my region goes from zero, well when x equals two, this point here is y equals four. So I'm gonna integrate zero to four, but then I need this green, x is a function of y. This is um, quite simple to solve. Just divide by two. So x equals y over two. So now, I am disks, and I will draw a picture of a disk. Thickness is delta y, I have a little r. All I need here is little r, I know the Area, well, it's going to be pi r squared to get the volume, multiply by delta y. Little r, and this is important. It's this length from here to here, right? Little r, because this will go all the way around. This is 2. This is, well, if I have some y value, it's this function, y over 2. So this little r, well you can think upper minus lower, but, but this is with respect to y, so it's the, the right minus the left, something like this, but it's 2 minus y over 2. So little r is 2 minus y over 2. Okay, now we can write down the volume of a disk, will be pi, 2 minus y over 2 squared delta y. Okay, and then the final thing to do is just write the definite integral. And make sure, I've seen this done incorrectly before, people will write 0 to 2, but those are x limits of integration. And you notice here we are integrating with respect to y. So the integral goes, we already found these, the total volume is an integral y goes 0 to 4, we have pi 2 minus y over 2 squared dy. And this is the setup. This is part b. Okay, both of these, part a and part b, we were trying to just set up only because really if you think about multiplying everything out and integrating, we're integrating polynomials. What is new for us is the setup. Okay, so this will end our volume day one, and then in volume day two, which is the next video, we will introduce the concept of volume by cylindrical shells.